Hey, bless up. The differences between relationships of the 80s and 90s than those of today in 2021. One difference is back in the day, you actually met people through a friend, you know, someone who was recommended. Therefore, there was already some sort of rapport and you didn't have to risk as much as meeting that person um, as far as being scared or timid. You know, some of that nervousness was washed away because of the mutual friend or relative that connected you to. Now today, you just go online and uh, whether it's social media or some sort of dating app, and you can find someone that you're slightly interested in enough to, you know, go on a date. Actually, to go on a date. As a matter of fact, women now are more brave and more bold and have the balls to ask guys out for dates and not be scared about it, you know, not even be ashamed about it or anything. Not that I see anything wrong with it, but that just shows the different type of consciousness compared to back then and now, you know, truth be told. Also, another difference is, number two, the music is different. You know, back in the day, we had songs um, by Champagne, you know, What About Us? You know, songs like that were, you know, very popular back in the day. And it made you actually want to get to know someone, you know what I'm saying? It made you want to get close to someone. It made you believe in romance, you know what I'm saying? That's another difference <laughs> we, we could get jumped right into. Um, people are not as romantic anymore or care to be romantic. I honestly think because, especially as a man, women aren't as uh, appealing as they were. Um, let me explain. You know, back in the day, a woman, she worked to develop herself to be a woman that's ready to be married. Um, a woman that is ready to have children and ha have a family and develop her inner qualities, you know, her intelligence. She read plenty of books. As a matter of fact, my second book is Seven Types of Queen King Desire is a relationship goals book for women and men who are actually trying to determine what type of woman that they are and men what type of queen they are looking for or they should be looking for so definitely seven types of queen to desires highly recommended book or they sought advice you know from elder women from the elders you know especially in african culture black cultures you talk to your grandmother your great grandmother someone who was more experienced in love relationships marriage parenting you know, uh, guidance, you know. Not only is it that relationships are completely different as far as romance, even raising up children is different because, you know, children today are raising themselves or, or, or being raised up by the internet, unfortunately, because the parents just shove a phone or a tablet in their face and tell them, okay, go ahead, be busy. You know, mama or dad is busy, but you know what's happening. As a matter of fact, uh, 60 Minutes just did a report regarding Facebook and Instagram. Uh, they had an interview with a woman um, named Francine, and she was a whistleblower for Facebook because she proved, and there's evidence showing that, okay, Facebook has 2.8 billion users, right? 2.8 billion users, and that's 60% of all internet users. Mind you, now, it has come to light that 13%, 13% of teenagers, female teenagers that are on Instagram and Facebook, chances of them committing suicide has increased. Chances of committing suicide has increased and has gotten worse. And on top of that, uh, food issues, as far as how much food they're consuming or um, wanting to uh, uh, you know, lose weight because they see all these sexy women or they don't have this particular body size, 17% of teenage girls has increased in eating disorders. So, and there, and it has a direct contact, direct connection between social media, their relationships with their families and themselves. So, Back then and now, things are completely different, even when it comes to dating. You know, back in the day, guys didn't really trip on how much money they were spending on a date. You know, if they had it, they had it. These days, 
guys, and speaking as a man, as a real man, we don't want to go on dates with just any woman. We want to know that if we're going to be spending, let's say, 80, 100, 200 dollars on a date, that this woman is a woman of quality. And so when we are questioning whether or not this woman is a woman of quality, what type of queen she is, and, and now even guys are questioning whether or not this is a woman at all. So not only has our, the quality of our women has changed, the quality of our gentlemen has changed. Well, not because they're not, you know, breaking bank and spending their, you know, all their money on dates, which is ridiculous. I mean, if I'm in Atlanta. You could spend thousands of dollars a month going on dates. As a matter of fact, Atlanta is a perfect city. If you want to blow money, hey, you can blow a lot of money in Atlanta. There's a plenty of opportunities to do so. There's parties every day. There's clubs. There's function events, networking. I mean, you name it. Whatever you're into, there's some of that in Atlanta. So, if you don't, if you don't have any, if you don't have a strong foundation or any direction or which way you want to go, especially when it comes to relationships, you're gonna be in for a long ride. Especially in mega metropolitans like Atlanta. You know what I mean? Another thing that's um, completely different, other than the music, the dating, um, <laughs> and things of that nature, and even the music. Another thing is the parents. People used to make it paramount that you met their mom or dad. Whether it was the very beginning point of the relationship or the dating or even before you start dating. That was big. You, you know, you have to meet my parents. They have to vouch. I have to vouch for you in front of my parents. So that one, the parents know that the son or daughter is in, you know, good hands. And two, it allows the the courter, the guy, the gentleman, to evaluate what type of family he's getting into. You see, people has lost sight on the fact that when you're dating in relationships, it's actually a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual connection. And so if you're not making that connection spiritually, it's going to be very hard to make it physically. Now, what has happened in 2021 leading to 2022 and beyond we have completely circumvented the spiritual component of relationships and now we've gone straight into the physical. That's why you have all these abortions. Um, there's been about 60 million abortions since the 1980s, which is horrible, horrible. We have so many broken marriages and broken homes, domestic violence all time high, verbally, you know, abusing your mates. I mean, it, I can go on and on and on and on because we have completely missed out on a spiritual component. Back in the day, we used to really pride ourselves on sitting at a table, praying and eating together. That was big. Many of us, unbeknownst to us, that sitting down as a family and praying is actually building and making the relationship stronger, you know, and we need to get back to that. And there's many, many other traditions and things we should do together. You know, sometimes you have family time, you outings together as a family. And we kind of take that for granted today because we, we think we have everything, all our answers is on our phones, on our tablets. But in actuality, what's happening, we are disconnecting with one another. And when we depend on things like social media, like Facebook, what you don't know is that they purposely are targeting us to think negatively and to look at negative things online and negative content or things that are going to attract our emotions going to make us react or, or, or post a comment you know that's why you had that um that riot at the capitol building you know what i mean because this was propaganda online building people connecting people with same negative thoughts same negative energy that drew them in together and Facebook was actually they're getting ready to get sued about that, <laughs> to be honest with you, because they were uh, promoting this hatred. You know, they allow these people to promote their hatred, and and there's even cases of genocide. When it comes to relationships, we can't depend on. What well, my point is, we can't depend online for true love. True love comes from time together. You know. Devoting quality time, getting to know each other, you know, laugh, cry, uh, watch movies, working out, exercising, working on our individual selves, you know, work on your individual selves. One of the main things people have told me from the creation of my book, Seven Tax of Queens, King Desire, is that, especially women, 
they represent all seven queens, right? Seven queens, spiritual queen, natural queen, cooking queen, warrior queen, wise queen, sexy queen, healthy queen. So I asked them, what type of woman are you? What type of queen are you? And most women would say, I am all seven queens, which you should think of that of yourselves. But in actuality, most of you women are not all seven women and cannot be all seven women. You know why? Because they're not intentionally working on improving themselves. They're not intentionally perfecting their flaws or working on their flaws. They just think it's got a big bust and big titties and breasts and yeah, I got this degree, you know, that I'm all that in a bag of chips. And see, that's a false deception. False deceptions leads to expectations that are denied. You know, false expectations leads to false realities. False realities equates to a ugly life of loneliness. A lonely life. No one wants a lonely life. So if you want to avoid a lonely life, you want to actually embrace a loving life, a life of love and having that person who makes you want to get up in the morning other than you already want to get up in the morning because self-love is first and foremost. But to, in order to find that person that you wish to marry, you wish to wake up the sunrise and, and the sunsets, have those romantic dinners with on the beach or at the park or camping or canoeing and, and all these beautiful things that life is about, because life is about love. I don't care what they're promoting right now, you know, through the news, all this chaotic stuff that's going on around the world. We always would need love. Women would need men. Men will always need women. I don't care what they are talking about. One man, one woman. Or oh, if you believe in polygamy, then it's you know, one man with multiple women and then you have monogamy, which is uh, one woman with multiple husbands. How do you get down? We need love. Life is about love. Love is elevation. Love is increase. Love is perfecting, protecting, peace of mind. Love is so much more than just physical sex. There's a spiritual component, and I want you guys to really, really, really let that seep in. Again, my name is King Kevin Dorval. Blessings. Avoid living a lonely life. Find love. Find yourself. And embrace your divinity. KevinDorval.com. You can get my book, and I will autograph it for you. And I appreciate you listening. Stay tuned for more. And thanks for subscribing, liking, sharing my video. Blessings.